page for some proceedings. My colleagues, uh, we approved the votes of proceedings of Tuesday, 11 February. From River State. Mr. President, I stand here to second the 2020. Thank you, Mr. President. Distinguished colleagues, today of February 2020, we approve say aye. That was again saying. The Deputy President of the Senate, the Chairman of the Senate Christian of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended, was constituted on the 6th of February. Assurances of my highest consideration, Your Excellency, sincerely yours, His Excellency Senator Ovo Ove Omo Agege, Chairman, um, Senator Oluremi Tunibu, the Chairman, Senate Committee on Communications. Your Excellency, notice of public hearing meant to investigate court the increasing rate of drop call and refer same to the Joint Committee for Further Legislative Action. Pursuant to this resolution, the 2 to Senate New Building at the 9th of February was the birthday of Senator Kashim Shatima, the Senator of Distinguished. And of course, today, the 12th of February, is the birthday of very distinguished Senator Saeed Al Ali. On behalf of the Senate, I wish you a happy birthday, long life, prosperity, and many ways of service to our fatherland. Sergeant at arms, please guide them to the seat. Guide them to their seat, please. Please. What more? Mr. President, I'm going to be quite brief, but all I'm going to say. Uh, late Senator Benjamin, uh, it get, brings out to time. There is time to be born, time to live. You don't know the time to be born and time to die.
hail the qualities of the late senator showed us quite clearly a capable, amiable, and highly industrious senator who has been able to discharge his responsibilities of oversight and representation, both to the assignment given him by the Senate and the assignment given to him by the people of his constituency. Ben's epitaph, Mr. President, can be summed up that he came, he saw, and he excelled. His brilliance will shine forever. May I, on behalf of this distinguished Senate, take this opportunity to commiserate with members of the Owadu Mugu family who are here today, members of his constituency, as well as the government and the people of Imo State and Nigeria, who have always lost a great man. We shall miss you dearly, our distinguished Senator Owadu Mugu. Good night. And to me to part no more. I do, Ben. Thank you, Mr. President. Minority leader intervention by expressing our condolences to the immediate family, the wife and the children, and the other members of the family. Please accept our condolences. And of course, our condolences to the Les Senators Senatorial District constituents. He lived and died for his people. Our condolences to the good people of Imo State and the government of Imo State. Indeed, the loss of Senator Wajumogu is a loss to all of us. All our colleagues who spoke gave account of their various experiences with him. Some outside of the National Assembly, many in the chambers of the Senate, either in the 8th Senate and, or in the 9th Senate. Senator Wajumogu gave a very good account of himself as a human being calm, cool, calculated, and purposeful. Of course, we met in the S Senate. He joined us a little bit late in the S Senate. And being the only senator of APC extraction from the Southwest, Southeast, he was close to everyone, especially in the APC caucus and indeed in the entire Senate. But then we had um, some misunderstandings in the, in the Senate, but we got over our misunderstandings. But Ben was something else. Every time there was a seeming crisis, he would preach, let us unite, let us work for Nigerians who have sent us here. That was in the 8th Senate. In the 9th Senate, he was delayed in joining us. So he took his oath of office after the inauguration of the 9th Senate. He remained the same person until the last day, in fact, up to the last day of a debate he participated here the debate that everybody referred to. Senator Ben is not dead. He is sleeping. Will, he will wake up tomorrow as we will all meet at the other side of River Jordan. Let me finish with this very nice verse. First Corinthians 15 verse 55. That says, all dead, where is thy sting? Oh, ye grave, where is the power? Ben is not dead. Ben is sleeping. I will say, 
catch you for. We'll meet tomorrow. Thank you. And so today, when we talk about Benji, we can say this very clear about him. He affected lives. He was a big man with a big heart. He was very, very accommodating. He carried everybody and was totally detribalized. He worked with the younger generation and had this special connection with them. And so they always followed him and they saw him at all times as a, an icon to look up to. He was very soft-spoken despite his uh, guest. He couldn't say, and then when you talk to him, even in the midst of problems, he will just answer you with very few words and you will calm down. He never shook the table just like I do. I know I shake the table. Maybe it's because I'm small. Big people don't want to shake the table. They may break it. But Benji was such a great man. Sometimes it is not what happens. It is how you live your life that will make your mark. And today, I can say truthfully that Benji made his mark on this earth and we will miss him forever. So be it. You recall that Ben passed through very challenging circumstances to join us in the 8th Senate. And again, he struggled to come to the ninth Senate. Now, all those struggles have ended. Therefore, life is just but vanity. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, even as the body of late Ben Wajmegu is lying out there, some of our compatriots are already struggling to take over the seat. My advice is that we need to honor Ben Owadibogu, hold our ambitions. Let us mourn him, bury him, then we can express our ambitions. But that tells you the vanity of life. Distinguished colleagues, this is my 17th year in these hallow chambers. I've had the unfortunate experience of going through this kind of exercise, paying tribute to our colleagues who died in active service. I recall from Imo State, Senator Ama Iwabu, he used to see somewhere here, brilliant man, first class economist. Whenever you present the budget, before we start the debate in the second reading, you come with a brilliant analysis of that budget that always guided us in discussing the budget. I wasn't around when I learned of his death. And I was saying, what a great loss. But I am standing not to mourn him. I'm standing to celebrate a life, a life well lived and spent. I know they said in the scripture, we've quoted a lot of scriptures, but we can learn a lot from that is what gives us strength in times like this. The scripture said the day we die is better than the day we are born. Why would you say that? Some children, they were given back to, they died, they didn't even get a name and they come back. So what a waste of life. But your father and your husband, your dear husband, came in, he saw, he you know, lived and he conquered. And looking at the people, the array of people that has come with you today showed a great man. And I believe that you are supposed to hold that with you, that your dad was a man that brought respect to you and great honor. The scripture also said in Proverbs 10, 7, the memory of the just is blessed. I pray that his memory will be forever sweet and blessed. And um, I also pray that you all will take solace in the fact that he came in here, I regarded him, I said, an elder statesman. And I believe that not everybody gets such honor. And um, he has lived well, no matter how short it is. And when I looked at it, I'll be 60 years old this year. 
And now I realize why he doesn't talk to me that much. He's a man that has shown me so much respect coming to this Senate to serve. And I pray that all of us, all the men here are like Senator Uwag Jumogo. He was a great man. He will be greatly missed. And I pray that God will console you and give you the fortitude to bear this irreplaceable loss. I also commiserate with my colleagues and I pray that uh, his gentle soul rest in perfect peace until we meet at the feet of our Lord and Savior. Thank you, Mr. Was when we were threatened, or I was threatened with suspension from these hollow chambers. Senator Ben Wajimogu, our leader, the Senate leader now, a lot of our leaders in the Senate at the time, they took a position that even though they were not threatened with suspension, if Senator Omar Gigi were to be suspended, they also would want to be suspended. Mr. President, they put their career in the Senate on the line in protection and in defense of one of their own. That was the man Ben Wajimogu was Mr. President. Mr. President, at the age of 52, when Ben passed, he had excelled in so many ways. Mr. President, Ben excelled. And he also felt, having survived the very rugged political terrain of the Southeast, and I call it rugged, just like my own terrain. Because I have leaders here who ordinarily on a good day would never allow people like us to ever emerge from Delta State or the South-South because of the political party that we belong to. Ben was my speaker in the Rescue Mission Administration of Fremont State for four years. And I know he's a man of largeness of heart. A man who loves to give without asking back anything. He's a political fighter. He's a dogged fighter. He's a good man. And everyone here can testify to that, even if you don't like him politically. But again, death has taken him from us. Perhaps, Mr. Senate President, this is a wake up call for those of us who are alive to understand that for every journey that has a beginning, we have an end. And for every sunrise, there must be a sunset. And for every birth, there must be a death. To rethink about ourselves and see the remaining part of our life as an opportunity to do good in whatever form or shape we can, because we may not have opportunity to do so again. His death is indeed a wake-up call. That sometimes we tend to segregate within political parties and families and friends. But right now, in death, you don't have political parties. I'm sure if that is something we can all fight, Mr. Senior President, this line of division that have divided PDP from APC would have occurred. I'm sure all of us would have gathered, pulled resources together, bring machine guns and whatever we can do to fight that. But who can question the authority of God when he has said it's all over? It's a wake-up call for all of us to think deeply that in this journey of life, one day shall come to an end. I will simply end by saying that Ben, good night. Ben, you came, you saw, you conquered. Ben, you've left behind people that still admire you to death. Opportunities have cannot call for again. And all this whole thing about life has ended. And that chapter is closed forever. <laughs>